Welcome back to another video in our series on HubSpot and Power Automate integration. In our next video, we're gonna be looking at a more practical example where I wanna be able to load deals or what are more commonly known as opportunities when you're looking at dynamics. I wanna load opportunities into HubSpot as deals. Now, HubSpot does have an integration tool built in to do this, but I have personally found a few issues with it and haven't been able to get it to work the way I want. So I have created my own integration instead using some of the things that we've talked about in the first two videos in this series to kind of really walk you through how it's possible to send information from Dynamics into HubSpot in the proper format. So that's what we're gonna be exploring in this next video. So let me go ahead and take that little warm up slide off my screen. And you will notice here that I have on my screen right now uh, a Power Automate flow, a very basic one. We're gonna see that right now I don't have anything in it at all, but we're gonna start by naming it. And I'm gonna put something like Migrate Dynamics Opportunities into HubSpot Deals. Now, why would I wanna do that? If I have a great system like Dynamics, which I do like, by the way, why would I wanna get those opportunities in HubSpot? Well, think about it like this. If I could tie my customers who actually make purchases to my marketing information, I would know which of my marketing campaigns are more successful than others, which ones are working, which ones are leading to actual sales. So I wanna be able to merge this information together so that way I can get a better picture of how everything is flowing together. All right, now again, there's lots of things inside of Dynamics that can help you answer that alone, but if you use a tool like HubSpot, this is how you can integrate those features and tools together. All right, so the way that we're gonna start is we're gonna connect into Dynamics. And from Dynamics, I wanna be able to find whenever we have a new opportunity that's been added or modified. So with inside of our flow, I'm gonna go up to the trigger area and we're gonna say when a row we're gonna be looking at Dataverse here. When a row is added or modified or deleted here, you'll see this is again a premium trigger. Really everything that we've been doing with inside of this series does require you have Power Automate Premium. Hopefully I've stressed that enough throughout these videos to make sure you are aware you will need Power Automate Premium to do these things. But we're going to be using the trigger here when a row is added, modified, or deleted from Microsoft Dataverse. If you're not familiar with Dataverse, check out our channel. We have lots of videos on Dataverse. Dataverse is essentially the database of the Power Platform and Dynamics. So we're gonna select that as our trigger. And it's gonna take a moment here to connect us into Dynamics or Dataverse. And the trigger type that we'd like to use in this case is going to be whenever a row is added or modified. I don't care when it's been deleted, but when it's been um, added or modified, we want to be able to fire off this flow and then send that information into HubSpot. Now, the table that we want to be able to monitor with inside of Dataverse, you might guess, is the opportunities table. So we're going to select the opportunity table here, and then we're going to set the scope to organization scope, which basically is what, at, what level of access does it have. So once we do that, I'd like to be able to capture and um, actually send information about the contact that's associated with this opportunity into HubSpot. Maybe I sold an opportunity and they were totally new and didn't exist in HubSpot yet. So I wanna be able to capture the contact information so that way I can load the contact into HubSpot if they didn't previously exist. So I'm gonna add another action here. And the action that we're gonna type in here is we wanna get a row by ID. All right, and again, best practice would be I should come and rename each of these. I will start to do that here. I wanna follow best practices whenever I can. So I'm gonna rename this one and I'm gonna say that we wanna pull back information from contacts and that we want to modify or monitor the opportunity table here. Okay. All right, now when we wanna get a row by ID, what we wanna find is we're looking for the contacts table. And what we wanna do is we wanna pass in the ID that we can receive from the opportunity. Every opportunity should have a contact associated with it, right? That means that we know who the person was that's associated with the opportunity, who the customer is. So what I wanna do is I wanna get the row ID, the ID number I can find using the dynamic content here. And there should be a contact value that we can use here. Contact value, which you can see just above me here. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the contact value. And that's gonna place that with inside of our flow. 
Now, now that we have the information about the contact that's associated with the opportunity, what we can do is we can actually run a similar request to what we've done in our previous examples and actually pass in some information into HubSpot to do a search to see if the contact already exists. So I'm gonna add in a new action here. This is going to be an HTTP action. Again, if, you're, if this is new to you, make sure you watch video number two in this series where I walk through doing this exact same setup. So this is actually no different than the setup I did in our second part of this video series. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna search for a particular contact. And there is a URL you can use. If you look at the HubSpot API documentation, this is the URL. We've looked at that in video two, so go review that if you'd like. We do have some header information that we need to pass into this, so we'll kind of plug that information in here. We're also gonna plug in the content type. So the content type will look like this. And our content type is going to be application slash JSON. We do need to pass in a bearer token. So I'm gonna type in bearer. And then the token, this is your, again, watch video number two if you're curious on how I'm doing this. But this is our private app access token that we're passing in. Now, if you remember from video two, we also wanted to do something where we could filter down the results to just find a particular contact. And so that we're doing something very similar to that in this example as well. We're going to be passing in a filter and just filtering to a particular value. The value that we wanna filter on is going to be the email address. And I wanna find whenever a particular email address is available, I wanna to filter to just that one contact. All right, so I'm gonna look for email address from my contact table and you'll see I'm passing that filter in here. Very similar to what we did in video two. If you wanna review that, I went through this in more depth. I'm trying to go through it a little faster because we've done it once previously. I will rename my action here and I'm gonna call this search for contact. And I'm gonna go ahead and save just because I've done a few things. It's always good to save after you make a few changes, of course, and I wanna make sure I don't lose my work. All right, so now that we've done that, what I'd like to do is I wanna see was Power Automate through the API connection able to find a contact that exists? If it wasn't able to find a contact, then fine, I will um, not do anything. Or sorry, if I don't, I'm not able to find a contact, I'm gonna create one. If one doesn't exist, I'm gonna create one. If one does exist, then I wanna tie that contact to this deal that I'm putting into HubSpot. All right, so to do that, we're gonna add in a condition. The condition is gonna to check to see whether or not the contact exists. So we're gonna search for the uh, condition operator here. And then inside of the condition, we're going to be looking for the, there's a special property that's returned back from our search uh, to save us a little bit of time here so we don't have to kind of guess and figure out what it is. I have pre-written this over here. I will show you exactly what the uh, expression looks like. If you look carefully at this expression, let me go ahead and copy this so we can get a better view of this. But this is the expression that we're going to be using. Now, it might be a little difficult to get that expression on your own. You may have to kind of manually write it out, but this is going to allow us to pull back a column called total from within inside of the API call. That total is telling us the total number of rows that it returned back. So I wanna know how many rows was it able to find? Was it able to find one? Was it able to find zero? Whatever the number is, I need to know so that way I can determine whether or not I need to create a contact because it didn't find one already. So that's kind of the idea of what we're doing with this total uh, uh, dynamic content here, which again, you may, have to you may have to manually write that out based on what I had on my screen just a moment ago because you might've noticed that it doesn't really pull up that dynamic content very clearly unless you have it um, typed out. So something to keep in mind. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. Now that we have the dynamic content plugged in here, let me plug it in one more time and the uh, condition is acting up here a little bit. I'm gonna save my work and I might need to refresh my screen. I'm sure if you've worked with Power Automate for some time, you might've noticed here and there, it gets a little, little lag or little issues here and there. And right now I am noticing that these are grayed out. I can't actually type anything in them. So I'm gonna refresh my window here that we're working on and then we're going to hopefully see that we can pass in some information into the conditions. It happens occasionally. Oh, it looks like I lost my work, but good news is I saved. So let me go find that flow we were just working on. Here it is. We'll edit it again. All right, there we go. Everything is looks to be in place except for my total option there. All right, let's just make sure... I think I have one little issue with my expression. This is named a little different. 
Mine was called search for contact. So I'm gonna have to slightly modify mine and then it should work just fine after that. All right, I think I need to get rid of that. There we go. Okay, we are in good shape here now. All right, so now that we have a, a, a return back, we're, we have a return from the API that tells us the total number of records it was able to find, we can say, hey, if you find at least one, then that tells us that the contact already exists and we don't need to create it. So what I'm going to say is if the contact total is equal to zero, that means it didn't find a contact and I need to create one. If it's anything other than zero, then that means the contact already exists and I'm just going to create the deal, okay? So if the contact doesn't exist, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new one. So check this out. I'm gonna actually bring in a pre-created action here to show you what we can do here. And this pre-created action, which I've already done, what it's going to do is it's gonna allow us to create a new contact that doesn't already exist. And so take a little bit of a peek at what we're doing here. I am gonna change one little element here. There we go. Uh, but it, what it's gonna allow us to do is to be able to pass in the information from our contacts table in Dataverse and then create a new contact inside of HubSpot. So it's creating a new contact in HubSpot here for us. Very cool. Now, once it creates the contact, I wanna return back the contact ID. And so what I can do is I can actually return back the contact ID from this newly created contact and then use it to assign that contact to a deal slash opportunity with inside of HubSpot. So a lot of little kind of things back and forth here that we're tinkering around with, but just to kind of show you the idea of what we can do here, I'm gonna show you another action that I've previously created that actually creates a new deal. All right, so I'm gonna go, go ahead on the no path here and I'm gonna paste in another action that already was pre-created and I'm gonna pass in my right token here. All right, so let's take a look at what we did. So this new API call is going to create a new deal. A new deal is HubSpot's phraseology for uh, opportunities. And so when it creates this opportunity, it's gonna pass in the amount, it's gonna pass in when the uh, date is, and it's also gonna pass in the name of the deal, which is the opportunity here. And then we'll have a few other things that get passed in as well. But it's tying it, it's actually doing this action here or this step called associations. And what associations is going to do is it's going to tie a particular contact to the deal. So there's a lot of moving parts in here, but the idea is that you'd have the ability to not only create contacts, you can create deals, all leveraging and using the HubSpot API here. Um, obviously what I would do over here on the left-hand side is once the contact is created, I would then still load in the deal, the opportunity into HubSpot. So again, the, the ultimate goal of what we're trying to do here, and, and we can spend some more time on this, but I think you're kind of getting the idea of what we're trying to do. We want to be able to tie sales opportunities to our marketing campaigns so that way we can know how successful they are. And that's really the ultimate goal of what we're doing. We did that here by leveraging the deals capability. Let me move out of the way so you can actually see this code a little bit here again. Uh, this is all stuff that you can find with inside of the HubSpot API documentation. You want to look for the deals section of the HubSpot API documentation to really learn a little bit more of what I'm doing when I'm passing these values in, but that will allow you to be able to send information into your HubSpot database. All right, so, so much stuff here, lots to learn, lots more to explore, of course, on your own, but hopefully this gets you started as far as the more real world scenario. When I have an opportunity that closes inside of Dynamics, I wanna create that new deal in HubSpot as well. And that's ultimately what we did in this example. Now, if you like these kind of videos, if you feel like you're learning some, let us know, comment below, but also like and subscribe. So that tells us, of course, that you want to see more videos and we will continue to post those as we hear your feedback. Thanks so much for joining today again and see you next time. Thanks a lot.